Hi, my name is François Serbel and uh, welcome to this new 5 minute video. I cannot tell you everything in 5 minutes, there might be shortcuts. This whole video is also available as a post in my blog. Redis was originally designed as a NoSQL database in the key value family. This means that you can store any value behind a unique identifier and that you can get the value back from the identifier. Redis can attach a timer known as a time to live or TTL to each key and will update it. This timer will count down to zero. Then it will expire the key and its value automatically. This can be very useful for temporary values and for caching. As an example dataset, well, let's take a very simple use case with a list of customers, a list of products and a list of orders made by customers. To keep things simple, an order only references one single item. This could be a data model to address analytical needs and to have sales statistics or marketing statistics. Regarding the data access pattern, in a key value data store, despite there are technical options to browse and query the key dictionary, this is an anti pattern. If you store customers, orders, and products, this would mean a full table scan on three tables, only to filter some identifiers. Thus, either the application knows the identifier to get the value from, or it cannot get the value. Either the identifier is known, a fixed value for example, or it can be calculated, guessed, from already known information, or it can be fetched from another key value such as a customer identifier list stored in a key, in a known key. As an example, if the application stores customers using the customer ID as a key, it can create one key pair per customer and one special key customers with a list of identifiers. Thus, either the application knows the identifier of the, want the wanted customer to get the details or the application can get the list of all customers' identifiers from the customer's key and go through the customers and only the customers, not the other records. This is a primary key index implementation. This might seem more complex because the application has to execute two queries. Well, when your application executes only one query on any other indexed database, the database engine would execute these two queries for you too. To achieve that, they have a generic fit-all-needs implementation, which is not optimized for your specific need. With Redis, you can implement the exact desired level of implementation to have an optimized execution. If you are interested in this topic, you can subscribe because I plan to talk more about key value data model design in another video. Regarding the stru structured data storage, in our example, we used customer details records with first name, civility, and so on. Product details records with description, price, and so on, and orders with the order date. We also stored the list of customers' identifiers and the list of products in, well, in three keys. Basically, we stored records and lists of unique identifiers. It would be possible to store this information in a block using serialization, but some queries would not be efficient. If the application wants to know does the reference XXX exist in the catalog, it would have to download the whole catalog, the list of product identifiers, unserialize it, parse it, well, this can be network memory and CPU consuming. This is why Redis understands data structures such as list of unique values, stores it as such and can manipulate it as such. The application can directly ask Redis, does the reference XXX belong to the product's key? And Redis will answer. Thus, the application does not need to download a potentially huge record through the network to deserialize it and parse it. Furthermore, it does not have neither to manage any kind of concurrency protection such as locks when updating records. Redis has the advantage of a key value store, simplicity and efficiency, but not the drawbacks. You got the idea. 
Well, I will tell you more about available data structures in the next video and about the data model design in another video. Don't forget to press the like or the don't like button. Both are interesting for me to adapt the content. If you want more, you can subscribe.